everyone. Today we're talking about exponential growth and decay. And we have actually done functions similar to this before. We didn't call them this. Um, but when we did geometric sequences, that was really similar to what we're talking about today. So some of this should sound at least a little bit familiar to you. So an exponential function is um, really any function with the variable up in the exponent. And I'm just going to, instead of variable, I'm just going to say x, but you know that we could use any variable. So any function with the variable in the exponent. And if the variable is in the exponent, what that really means is that you're changing how many times you're multiplying by a given number. So the formula for these always looks like this. y equals a times b to the power of x. So that's exponential because the x is up here. And so what this is really saying is we're starting with this much. So the a is considered to be like our initial value. That's the amount we're starting with. And we're taking that initial value and multiplying it by b a whole bunch of times. Okay, however many times we want x to represent. So in terms of what we're talking about today, b is considered to be, um, it's called a growth factor. And that's like what you're multiplying by over and over again. And it's important that your growth factor is a positive number. And we're going to break that growth factor down a little bit more later on. Um, but if it were a negative number, as you're raising it to powers, it would be cycling back and forth between positive and negative. Because every time you raise it to an even power, it would come out positive, and then it would go negative again, and that would just mess up your whole function. So b is always going to stay a positive number. And then x, obviously, is the number of times you're going to multiply. Um, in these, like the real life situations that we're going to be working on today, like the applications, this is typically, though not always, but typically a measure of time. Okay. But again, that's really just specific to this exponential growth in dk. The x really mathematically represents how many times you're multiplying by that growth factor. Okay, so like I said, we're going to talk about growth and decay. And hopefully, just by the meaning of those words, you understand that growth means we're increasing and decay means we're decreasing. So growth, we're getting bigger. Decay, we're getting smaller. And here's how we do that. If we want to grow by multiplication, multiplying by 1 would keep our value exactly the same. So if we want to get bigger, we need to multiply by something bigger than 1. So when we're talking exponential growth, our b value always needs to be something bigger than 1. Whereas with decay, your b value has to be less than 1. But we have to be careful here. Um, because we also said that our growth factor has to stay positive. So if it's less than 1, we want to make sure we're not dipping into those negatives. So we also say that it has to be bigger than 0. Really, your b value has to be between 0 and 1. Now, think about what kind of numbers we're talking about here. Okay, Numbers between 0 and 1 would be like fractions and decimals. If you multiply by like 0.5, for example, isn't your number getting smaller? So that's what this is doing, is if I pick a number between 0 and 1, it's going to make um, my value get smaller. So here's what the graphs look like of functions like this. When it's exponential growth, you'll see that it's increasing. When it's exponential decay, you'll see that it's decreasing. Um, other than that, these really look similar to each other. Okay, They're actually reflections of one another. There's a couple of important features of these graphs that you want to make sure you know. First of all, the y-intercept is always going to be um, at a specific value. And here's where we would find that. At the y-intercept, we always know that x is equal to 0. So if I were to plug in a 0 for x, like that, into my function, we know b to the 0 is really just 1, so it cancels out because multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. And so you'll see that when I put in a 0 for x, I'm always left with just whatever my a value is. So on both of these functions, the y-intercept is always at 0, a. Whatever your a value is, is going to be your y-intercept. 
okay? Which should make sense because that's your initial value, that's where you're starting and you're either growing or decaying from there. The other thing I want you to notice is that these graphs, whoops, let's make that bigger, these graphs kind of skim along the x-axis, but they never really cross it. And we talked about that previously. We talked about that way back in chapter two when that happens. When that happens, that line that's like the invisible barrier, this right here, is called an asymptote. Okay, and the decay one has one in the same place. So the x-axis is considered to be an asymptote because the graph is never actually going to touch that line. And the reason for that, if you think about it, if you have, let's say, 4 to the power of x, okay, can you ever make that equal 0? Can you ever make 4 to the power of x equal 0? Is there any power that you could raise to that would make that equal to 0? I could... I could do a power of 0, that would just make a 1, so that's not equal to 0. I could start putting negatives in here, and that's just going to get me really tiny fractions. But there's never any power that I could put right here that would give me a value of 0. Okay, And that's why these graphs are never going to touch the x-axis, because these graphs are never going to equal 0. Okay, Just like... Um, Oh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, oh, just like what we talked about previously with hyperbolas, that's when we had the asymptotes again. Um, hyperbolas, we had numbers divided by x, okay? And you couldn't ever have x be equal to 0, and you couldn't ever have them equal to 0. So that's why you had the asymptote show up, okay? So um, these functions will always have the x-axis as an asymptote. Also, these functions can never be equal to a negative number. Remember, even if I put negative powers in here for x, um, it's never going to actually equal a negative value. A negative power is just going to flip it and make it a fraction. Okay, So these graphs will always have an asymptote at the x-axis, always have a y-intercept at the a value. Those are the things that you need to know about the graph.